at long last after working on this barn for a year and a half it's finally ready to paint and I'm so excited it's a little breezy out so I apologize for any wind interference uh, so we got the siding all complete and I'm stoked it took so long just plugging away a little at a time as we could afford it and it's finally done of course with the exceptions of the two two doors but uh, yeah I'm, I'm excited once I get this painted I'll add a piece of trim right over here just to transition the metal to the hardy siding a uh, piece of like I guess it's J channel or something like that I just have to get that and uh, that'll transition the metal to the rest of the barn here but check that out now I have a bunch of caulking to do so I'm gonna jump on that and try to start caulking now and as hot as it is it shouldn't take it too long to dry and once that's dry we'll break out the uh, paint sprayer and go to town let's get going Well, it took a few hours, but that is done. All the caulking's done. What a pain. Man, I hate caulking. It's one of the worst jobs. But we got, got it all done, both sides, or I should say the front and the side. All of the butt joints and the corners, everything. So we are ready to paint. I forgot how quick these paint sprayers are <laughs> it took us a good part of a day to paint that chicken coop and uh, this took about three minutes so it took longer to get the pump primed on the paint sprayer than it did to, to paint that whole wall so let's get the front knocked out it shouldn't take but a few more minutes
am so excited it turned out so good um i ran out of white trim paint so i didn't wasn't able to finish the last uh, trim piece over here and i really need to put a second coat on what i've already painted because if you're right up close to it you can see the red bleeding for a little bit so i'll get some more white trim paint and get it on there but at least i've got the first coat on and from a distance it looks really really good so i'm stoked it turned out better than i was even expecting i forgot about this too i didn't quite have enough to finish in here but if you look real close you can see the hardy trying to bleed through a little bit and uh out here you can kind of see little speckles of red so we'll get some more i'll get another gallon and that that'll more than do it i'm glad we ended up doing this option here instead of uh the window that i was originally going to do as i'm learning more about youtubing and video and that sort of thing i'm learning that natural light in an inside setting it can be good if you know how to use it but it can also be bad and mess up all of your videos so we decided to just close that window off and do a fake looking like a, a hayloft a vintage hayloft door type of deal up there and i'm happy i'm happy with that it actually looks better than the window would have looked so anyway let me turn the camera around real quick i'll show you our garden and then uh, we'll call it a day this here is the glass gem corn I bought these seeds on Amazon and I uh, think that was probably a bad idea. I mean, these look okay. I've had to fertilize them already twice, I think, but they're not consistent. So if you look over here, I mean, these are pretty short. Those are yellowy. So I don't know how successful this is going to be. The cotton's doing good, which we've grown this time of year before and uh i mean this is looking very nice and healthy of course i need to get in here and do some weeding but uh the cotton's looking great this row here was green beans and i say was because i don't well there's a plant there you go it looks terrible wilted and i think down here is the only other one that survived and it looks terrible so these do not tolerate the heat very well and we had a bunch sprout but the mole crickets cut them off and ate them so black eyed peas on the other hand are doing great now we had a few of them get cut off that's why they're kind of sparse and there's some bare areas but the, these plants are looking really really good This is the Indian corn. This is doing great. So this is almost about six, it's getting close to six feet tall. And it's tasseling out. And if you look down here, you got corn silk starting. So it won't be long. We'll be getting us some corn off of this. Now, it's doing good and I fertilized it a couple times as well. But if you look down low, the, the leaves are browning up. And as you get down to the other end, it's quite a bit shorter on this end. Second problem, which I was anticipating this being the problem, bugs. So if you look at these leaves, I mean, they're eat up. So they got the little worms down in the tassels before they start to tassel. They'll get those worms down in there. And I already applied some dust to these to... Uh, to get rid of those so they're they're coming on out now the bugs have died but there's still stuff eating the leaves there you can see the remnants of some of them bugs these are the peanut plants they're looking great i mean they are looking fantastic i'm excited about peanuts it's been probably i don't know three or four years since i've grown peanuts um the cool part about these is when you pull them up, pick the peanuts off, you can feed these to the cows. And peanut hay, so when they use this, it's the equivalent to um, the nutritional value of like alfalfa. So it's, it's good stuff. So we've got, you know, four good rows of peanuts 
that will have the tops to feed to the animals once we're done. This poor hybrid corn, I don't know. I'm uh, starting to lose hope on it. It's, it's pretty pitiful looking. This down here is a little greener and a little healthier looking. But again, the bugs have been a, a big factor. Planting this late in the season is, uh, in case you didn't know, all the bugs come to vacation in Florida too, I think. <laughs> so they're all uh, stopping by our place to eat, it looks like. Lastly, we got the sweet taters. They're doing great. They're vining out and doing really, really good. So I would say this one here starting to wilt a little bit. That one might be done. We may dig that one up pretty soon and check on it. But yeah, they're they're doing great. And where the vines hit the ground, they actually send down roots. In some places I've covered dirt over them to uh, to where they'll produce more. Uh, taters underneath there because usually where the roots go down they'll they'll produce But this was an experiment I wanted to see this late in the season hot summer conditions here in Florida North Florida uh, What would grow and what wouldn't this time of year, so I'm uh, I'm not gonna call it a total failure because we've learned a lot from it, so anyway Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.